video clip 4.5. In this video clip, I'm going to explain to you what a bond instrument is. Now, we've spoken about bond instruments previously when we discussed repurchase agreements, but we have not really explained to you what a bond is. Now, a bond that is traded in the financial markets is an instrument that's very similar to a home bond. When you buy a house, you often get a bond to finance that house. And that sense, these bonds are similar. It's also a debt that you have to repay. And it's also similar in terms of maturity. A home bond is usually paid back over 20 or 30 years. And it's the same for these bond instruments. Their maturity is also usually for quite a long time. It can be 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, depending on what the issuer's needs are. Right. It is different from a home bond in the sense that these bond instruments are much more tradable. They are more liquid. You can easily sell them. Often, they are also, you can trade them on the stock exchange. In South Africa, bonds that are listed are traded on the JSE. So it's easy to sell these bonds if you want to sell them. It's also different that for a home bond, you will usually repay the capital amount over the lifetime of the bond. So every year you will repay some of the capital. With a bond instrument, the capital amount is usually only paid back at the end of the lifetime on a certain date that is predetermined, or it ca there can be two or three dates at which it will be paid back, but it will not be paid back during the lifetime of the bond. So let's look at an example of a bond instrument and the information that you will be provided with on such an instrument. Here we have bond A, the principal that is the capital value, which is the same as the nominal value of a money market instrument, is a million rand. There is a coupon rate on the bond of 10%. That is interest that's going to be paid by the issuer, by the deficit unit that issued the bond on this bond every year. So that 10% is an annual rate. The issue date will be provided, and then this bond will have a maturity date when it's going to expire. You get, can see that this bond is going to run for 10 years, from 2012 to 2022. Then the coupons is going to be paid on specific dates, and those dates are also provided on the bond. 30 June and 31 December in this case. Um, coupon payment dates can be once a year, they can be twice a year, sometimes they can be four times a year. Right. In this case, it's two times a year. Now we're going to look at the flows of funds that's concerned with a bond instrument. Now we have a deficit unit and a surplus unit. Now when the deficit unit needs funds, it can issue a bond such as bond A, and then funds are going to flow from the surplus unit to the deficit unit. So this is a flow of funds. So the surplus unit will acquire the bond and the deficit unit will get finance to finance the deficit. Now the amount that's going to flow on this issue date will depend on the price of the bond. If the bond is issued at par, then we say that the price of the bond is 100 rand per cent. Now that means for every 100 rand of the value of the principal, 100 rand is going to be paid. So in this case, 
the surplus unit is going to pay a million rand for this bond. He's buying it at par, in other words, at the same price as the principal. But the bond can also be bought at a discount. Now, if a bond is bought at a discount, the price will be less than 100 Rand per cent. For instance, 98,5 Rand per cent. So that will mean for every 100 Rand of the value of the bond, the buyer will pay 98 Rand and 50 cent. So if we work that out on the calculator, 98.5 divided by 100 times the principal value, which is a million, that gives you 985,000 rand that's going to be paid for this bond. Sometimes the bond can also be bought at a premium. That will mean that the price will be higher than 100 rand per cent. For instance, 102 rand per cent. So now, for every 100 rand of the principal, the buyer is going to pay 102 rand. So if we work out how much is going to be paid for this bond now, it is 102 divided by 100 times the principal value, a million, and that gives you 1,020,000 rand that's going to be paid for this bond when it was bought at a premium. Right. So on the issue date, the price of the bond will determine how much money is going to flow from the surplus unit to the deficit unit. Then there are also going to be coupons that's going to be paid annually, and in this case, twice a year. Now, the coupons, how much will be paid, will depend on the coupon rate. It's going to be 10% in this case. So 10 over 100 times the principal value, which is a million. So the annual coupon that's going to be paid is 10 divided by 100 times the principal value of a million. And that gives you 100,000 Rand per year. But because this bond is going to be paid twice a year, the holder of the bond is not going to get 100,000 Rand on 30 June and on 31st of December. He, he or she is going to get half of that. So on 30 June, 50,000 Rand will be paid. And on 31st December of every year, the other 50,000 Rand coupon will be paid. Now we're going to look at the return on this bond. Now, if the bond is bought at par, so it's bought at the same price as the principal amount. That will mean your return is the 100,000 Rand coupon that you will receive annually, 
divided by the principal amount and to change that into a percentage times 100 over 1. So it is 100,000 divided by the principal, a million times 100, and that gives you 10%. So you can see that when the bond is bought at par, the return on this bond is exactly equal to the coupon rate. However, when this bond is bought at a discount, that will mean that the return is going to be different because now the amount that's going to be paid for the bond is different, but the annual coupon remains the same. So let's calculate it. It will be the coupon remains 100,000, but now the price was 985,000 Rand times 100 over 1. So if we calculate that, 100,000 divided by 985,000, that gives you 0 0.101523 times 100 gives you 10, 1, percent. So now you can see, because you paid less for the bond, but your, the amount of coupon that you receive every year it remains the same, your return on it is higher. Let's look at the return for the bond that was sold at a premium. In this case, the coupon remains the same. That does not change over the lifespan of the bond. But the buyer paid uh, 1,020,000 for it. 1,020,000. times 100 over 1 to get it to a percentage. So if we calculate that, 100,000 divided by the price that was paid, 1,020,000 times 100, that gives you 9,1 percent. So they, do you see <coughs> that when the price of the bond is lower, the price is lower, the return on the bond is higher. And when the price is higher, the return on the bond is lower. And that demonstrates the inverse relationship between the price of a bond and the return on a bond. So we've now discussed the first flow of funds on the issue date. We've discussed the coupons that's going to flow from the deficit unit to the holder of the bond twice a year. The last flow of funds related to a bond has to do with the amount that's going to be repaid on the maturity date. So on the maturity date, the deficit unit is going to pay back the principal amount of the bond to ever holds the bond on that day. Now, of course, if you hold a bond, as we've said previously, 
it is liquid, therefore it is not necessary to hold it until the maturity date. It can be sold during the lifespan of the bond. And that we will discuss in the next video clip.